Hi everyone, this is Brittany from the Rocket Phonics Foundation. Today, I'm gonna to be walking you through your very first day at a new site with new students. Um, to do that, we're gonna be touching on the games we play, um, the cards we use and how to be prepared and not get overwhelmed. And then we're also gonna be chatting through your um, student portfolio sheets. So understanding what that is, since we will be using it a lot on the very first day of evaluations. So I'm going to give you a close up of a um, student portfolio sheet. Let me share my screen right here. All right, so this is a student portfolio sheet. You're going to notice right off the bat that there are um, a section for the student name, the student's date of birth, and then the teacher's name. Um, that the student's name is going to be the student's name. Say his name is Jack. His birthday, you can leave blank unless he knows it. The teacher's name, you can put his actual teacher and then put a little slash and then put your name. So on, the, um, on our internal side, we know what game coaches are with what student in what class, please. All right, and then moving down, you're gonna see we have um, this section right here with these colored columns. These are groups from easiest sounds to hardest sounds to introduce to our students. They're also conveniently grouped in um, colors based off of their bingo card. So for example, every um, Rocket Phonics kit comes with a blue folder and inside that blue folder are bingo cards. There are green and yellow and blue and red bingo cards. Um, on the green bingo card, there are actually letters E, L, F, M, A, N, H, I, K. Just like you see in this very first column on the student portfolio. So if you wanted to be prepped and ready for your very first day, what you could do as a game coach um, is go ahead and look through your play and read cards and sift out letters E L F M A N H I K. That way you already have them on hand. Now they are grouped in pairs, so there's going to be two of every card, and that's perfect. Um, bingo, you only need a half of a pair, but go fish, you need both. Memory game, you need both. Since it's the very first day, especially with the youngest kids, so say pre-K or kindergarten, we're gonna always be starting with bingo as our very first game for evaluations. So we're gonna use them for example today as if we were going to be filling out a student portfolio on the first day. So I went ahead and I filled out that top information. I'm gonna go ahead, flip the student portfolio over on the back and fill in today's date because that's really important to help us keep track of how many sessions we have with each student. And then I am going to go back to the front page and I'm gonna make sure I have my, my bingo, my green bingo. And the reason we're starting with the green one, it's because it's the easiest. So we wanna build their confidence uh, some students you're going to notice know more than other students. That's completely fine. That's what we're here for, to help every um, type of student, no matter what level that we're at. The first day, however, is just figuring out where are they at. So we do that by playing bingo. We like we've, we've already pulled out the cards that we've needed. And then once they have um, flipped over their first card, in this case, it's a picture of a nest, the letter N with the N sound. If they say nest, you're gonna go ahead and put one slash where the N is. If they also know the sound for N is N, then you're gonna complete with another slash to make an X, okay? So some of the students are gonna have just slashes with a couple Xs. Some are just gonna have slashes. And then some are gonna probably have a ton of Xs. Now, if you have a student that has a ton of X's when you play green bingo because they know all the pictures and they know all of the sounds that go with them, play another game. This time, bump up to the next column, which is gonna be the yellow. 
So it might take you a second to pull out the cards um, from this column. So B, S, T, D, O, G, J, R, Z. It might take you a second to do that, but go ahead, have your student kind of collect the bingo chips or just do something fun while you kind of handle that. Talk to them, get to know them, build a relationship. You're gonna see them for the next couple of weeks. So this is a great chance to do that while you're finding your cards. So um, you're going to wanna play another game with them quickly because you have a little bit less time. We work in 15 minute increments with the students. And then you're just gonna play another round. Now, if your student didn't have a ton of X's when you played the green bingo with them, don't progress to the next level. We don't wanna frustrate them. We don't wanna embarrass them. We want to have fun. Having fun is the absolute secret ingredient to having a child's desire to learn more and actually learn and retain the information. Um, we encourage you game coaches to be silly, celebrate, if you've played bingo, um, get up and dance. Do it the bingo dance. Give them a sticker. Give them a high five. Tell them, great job. You're on fire. You are so smart. You are a baby genius. I tell some of my kids. They love to be called a genius. Who doesn't? So I don't blame them, but have fun with it. So those younger students on your very first day, evaluations are all about um, starting with green bingo and then working your way up. Just remember you have limited time with the students, about 15 minutes, okay? So now say you have like a first grader, a first grader, a second grader. Um, we're actually not gonna play bingo. We're gonna play go fish with our students. We're still gonna use the student portfolio for marking. Um, we're still going to write today's date and we're going to use both sides of the card. So now we're gonna need both of the matches. Um, once we've got all the cards figured out, we're still gonna start with the green column, which are letters E, L, F, M, A, N, H, I, K. And then we're gonna shuffle them up. So shuffle, 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 it's hard to do. Here we go, I'm gonna do it one handed. All right, so we're gonna shuffle them up and you'll notice the deck's pretty thin, totally fine. Um, give them four cards, give yourself four cards. So one, one, two, two, three, three, four, four. All right, everybody has four cards. Now, if I'm playing with a student, I go ahead and hold my cards in my hand, but I actually lay their four cards out in front of them because typically they can't hold all four in their hand at one time. So theirs will be laid out in front of them. Then I say, okay, do you see any of the cards that match? Do any of them look the same? Notice the two the eggs are the same. So I'll have them point to it. And I'm like, oh my goodness, you have that. What's that picture? And they'll say eggs. And I'll say, what's the secret sound for eh or for E? And they'll say eh, like eggs. And I'm like, yeah, you just got a point. Let's set these aside. So now they're starting off with two. I'm seeing if I have any pairs. Oh, I do. But you know what? They just had a moment because they won. So I'm not going to even lay my pair down, even though I have two for horses right here. Just going to hold on to them because why not? They're on an emotional high because they just got a point. And so we're just going to begin our game. So then they have two left. And I'm like, okay, this is how it works. You're going to ask me, um, which one do you like better? They're like, oh, I like the fish. I'm like, okay. What's the secret sound for F? They're going to say, the fish. And I'm like, perfect. So ask me if I have that card. And I said, Miss Brittany, do you have a f for fish? And I'm going to look, I'm going to say, mm, no, go fish. And they're going, okay, what's that mean? I'm like, pick one up. And then they just put it down. And then it's my turn to ask them. We go back and forth, back and forth, back and forth until whoever has more points. And remember, the student always wins. But you should never be winning. Because why? That's what keeps them interested and wanting to learn more. So if they are breezing through those um, that go fish game, they know all the pictures and all the sounds. Go ahead and add some cards to the deck from that second column, those yellow column cards. So B S T D O G J R Z. That's going to be your way for working with those first, second graders on how you'll evaluate them. So still start easy. It's not going to be easy for everyone. Start with the green column, find the matches, make that a pile, 
it's too easy, sprinkle some sounds for some letters from the yellow column, so on and so forth. Keep in mind, time is limited. I always use my cell phone to kind of help me track myself with time. I set a 15 minute timer. It goes off and I'm like, okay, we'll just wrap up what we're doing and be done. All right, so that's really important. All right, now say your student's a little bit older. Maybe they're in third grade and they already know all of their letter sounds. How we evaluate a student that's a little bit older is a little bit different. So we'll actually open up the book. Um, for this, so if you're with the older kids, you're going to need access to a Rocket Phonics book. There's actually a volume one and a volume two. We're going to start with volume one because it's the easiest to start with. We're going to go to page, let's see. So we can go to page like, where is it? Okay, page 36. So there's pictures of exactly what's on the cards. So we'll ask them, okay, this is the sound. Can you find something that starts with that? So if they can correctly say ah, otter, sun, we can check that off their list. They know that. Then we'll move on to something a little bit more advanced. We'll go to a phrase. Let me pull this up. So maybe like, where's my phrases here? Just a second. Um, here we go. These are like many sentences. Crash and shed. Can they read that? Do they know what it means? Um, if they can read it without sounding it out, that's their sight word. So you just want to keep moving on till they get to a part when they have to sound it out. So after a phrase, we might we might go to a sentence. Are they able to read it? Are they um, confusing like of and a? That's okay. But if they're confusing like tornado and earthquake, that changes the story. So that would be an error. We don't want students to have more than three errors. So if they have about three errors when they're reading, they're probably at their educational level or a little bit advanced. So we might wanna backtrack a little bit. Um, now, say they read a sentence, it's completely fine. You want to bump up to the next level. We might put them in a paragraph or a short story. Um, these books um, increase. So and they start at first grade and they go all the way up to, I think, um, seventh grade. I need to get back to you on that. But that, there's a volume two, and the story's um, getting longer and more advanced. So I promise you there is going to be a level for any student that you're working with for us to be able to determine their educational level. Okay, so now once we are working with this third grader, we've had our first day, we've evaluated them, we've determined, okay, this is where they're making about three errors. They've read this paragraph and I've noticed they've made three errors. I don't verbally tell them, I just make a mental note of it. And then I come up with a plan for them. So maybe I've determined that they um, have really good sight words, they can comprehend, but they have a problem with their phonic system. Um, they need help learning how to sound out words because they're just guessing. Um, that tells me that they have a weak phonic system. So to build a better phonic system, the rest of our sessions are going to be playing games like bingo, go fish, memory game, whack the sound all build your phonemic awareness and help you recognize that letters have sounds. So by playing games, just like we do with the younger students, we're building their phonemic awareness. We're helping them coming up with a system for memorizing that letters have sounds. Because once you know that, you can decode words. Um, you have the skills to be able to know that um, this means this sound. And if it's next to this, it means this a little bit more and you kind of chunk your way through each little sound until it makes a word and then boom, you've got a new word. So it's really a beautiful thing. Um, and that is how we spend our first day evaluating. Now just remember those student portfolios are important to mark down. There's a front and back to every single page. 
Um, and that is what's going to help us on the internal end kind of group the students moving forward. So if you have any questions, please reach out to us. We're more than willing to um, go beyond in training. Remember to have fun. These are five to, to eight year olds that we're working with here. So um, don't take yourselves too seriously. Have fun. If you can invest in some stickers, I absolutely recommend it because these kids will do anything for stickers, even if they're in third grade. So um, have a great first day. You now know everything it takes to be the best game coach and how to crush your first day. Good luck to you.